Scenery in Suzhou is fine. That of morning and night are divine. Colors tinge the dawn while smoke perfumes the dusk. Trees voice the sound of autumn in August. In this poem, the Tang poet Bai Juyi depicts scenic Suzhou. Near Suzhou, historic Changshu City is a charming ancient town subtly carved out by time. Green New Mountain, vast and deep Shang Lake. The mountain and the lake contrast each other. Simple Zhengsai, steamed food, and light tea in Changshu linger in your memory. Time stands still in its history. Melodies resonate in this ancient city. My friends in Shanghai tell me that they often enjoy their weekends in Changshu, where the landscape is picturesque and people are kind and down to earth. This green city with mountains and rivers is like the back gardens of Shanghai. Today, I borrowed my friend's bicycle and prepared for a trip to Changshu. Hello, Changshu. I'm coming. A Changshu local often begins his or her day with a bowl of shun yu mian, noodles cooked with fried pine mushrooms. At seven or eight o'clock every day, the noodle house beneath Xingfu Temple is already crowded with people. The elderly drink tea, play with birds, and play card games. The young go to work after eating shun yu mian. Eating a bowl of noodles and drinking a cup of tea is a living habit of Changshu people, and I can't wait to join them now. Here we are、uh, with the, the Xing noodles, which are the most famous noodles in China. I'm sitting here、um, at the temple with the Lao Ban of the restaurant. Ni hao, Lao Ban. Ni hao. Ah, how long have you been working here? This restaurant has been open for thirty years. I've been working here for thirty years. Ah, okay. Can you tell me about the ingredients that are in、uh, the soup, in the noodles? Uh, this is our local farmer's ginkgo. The boss told me shun is a kind of wild mushroom, among which pine shun and chicken breast shun are the best. And are mainly produced in Yu Mountain, Changshu. It is natural and healthy. The toppings in Shun Yu Mian consist of fried shun. It has a sharp aroma and tastes so delicate. The noodles are very. They're thin, but they're very delicious. They're held together, similar to spaghetti in America. They're tender. They're they have a kind of a warm fragrance. They're very careful when they pick the mushrooms that they get the right ones. But these are very healthy. Tables are set under 500-year-old trees, and the aroma of shunyomian wafts everywhere in the mountain. Watching the stream of people, I think the locals have already balanced the pace of life pretty well. After eating noodles and drinking tea, local people would like to take a walk on the mountain. Hey, using this way, I can also lose some weight. All seven streams which cross the city leads to the sea. Most of the miles of the Green Mountains are surrounded by city. Green Mountain refers to Yu Mountain, which is located in the northwest of Changshu. Adjacent to the Yangtze River and Shang Lake, Yu Zhang, A.K.A. Zhang Yang, was a disciple of Confucius. Yu Mountain was where Yu Zhang was buried, and thus this is how the mountain got its name. This is a Tai Chi pattern. Okay. With the Yin and the Yang. Yeah. And、uh, actually, everything in the world can use the Tai Chi. Hmm. And which、like、one of these is the yang? This is the yang. This is yang. Yeah. And okay. The, this is the yin. This is yin. So,、uh, okay. like water is the ah.、Yin. So there's water so in here. So this is water. Ah. This is the Yushan Mountain. Okay. Right. So Shanghu Lake. The lake is the、uh, Yushan Mountain. Ah.、Uh, we、good. are roughly here. Okay. At the west part of the mountain. The west part of the mountain. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Chinese people attach great importance to the harmony of yin and yang. Yu Mountain and Shang Lake in Changshu perfectly represent the balance of yin and yang. 
With a bird's eye view over Changshu, we see Xiang Lake is in the west half of the circle, while Yu Mountain in the east half of the circle. These two halves constitute a perfect Tai Chi diagram. Wang Daohan once used the expression, among the lakes and mountains in the world, the best ones are in Changshu, to describe the landscape in Changshu. He was teaching me some Tai Chi, some Kung Fu. We were on the top of the mountain, and the story on this mountain is that there was an ancient king. He went looking for a sword on the mountain, had many of his soldiers looking for a sword. Couldn't find it, and so the, the king got angry and took the sword that he did have, and he struck a rock, and it split the rock. And so that's kind of a, it's called like a razorback um, on top of this mountain. Miles of Green Mountain and Seven Streams are beckoning tourists to experience the water in Jiangnan. We visited the Yu Mountain yesterday. Our goal today is Xiang Lake. Let's go! My friends told me that Xiang Lake was formerly known as Xi Lake or Xiang Qian Lake. Legend has it that in the Lake Xiang Dynasty, Jiang Xiang lived along this lake as a hermit in order to keep himself away from the despotic rule of the King of Shang. This is why people called it Shang Lake. Look, there's a person in a bathtub going to and fro in the lake. He seems to be picking some tiny flower-shaped plant. It's interesting. I also want to have a try. <laughs> a man told me to relax before I enter the bathtub. I should put my feet in the center of the basin, keep my balance, and then go forward. I will march on. Go! <laughs> Ah, my legs are too big. The bathtub is the means of transportation a water chestnut picker uses to pick water chestnuts. Its small size allows a person sitting inside to go everywhere on the water. Uh, here's the water chestnut that they're picking up out of the lake. And I think you just open it up. Maybe? Ah, see? And then you can eat it from here. I guess maybe I should try. Ah, it's delicious. That's very good. Ah, ah, I like this. Sorry, I eat your chestnut. Water chestnuts grow in the mud of the river. They are ripe to pick around mid-autumn festival. Freshwater chestnuts are very delicious and people can eat them raw or cook them. There are famous water chestnut dishes, such as water chestnut congee, cooked pork with water chestnuts, and etc. From the ways people plant and eat water chestnuts, we can see how Changsu people follow the rule of nature and develop an eco-friendly life. Now the fun part about this is very similar to a bumper boat. On a hot summer day, it's great fun to play in the water. I don't know how to pick water chestnuts, but sitting in the bucket, I can turn round and round. It feels like I'm riding on a bumper boat. It's very interesting. Can this be counted as an invention? <laughs> I've spent a lot of time in the water now. I think it's time to go back to shore. Hey, how? Hello. Hello. Ah, uh, yes. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm not go off the road. Then we went out to the lake. The lake is huge. It's huge. You can you could spend all day. It's like Disney World in Florida. You could spend all day there and you would enjoy it and you couldn't see everything if you were there all day. Um, going out and seeing the birds, floating in the boats, um, walking near the waterfalls. Stunning. <laughs> In China, what I watch the most is neither American TV shows nor variety shows, but I watch the Chinese documentary, A Bite of China. Why? Because culinary delights are my lifetime pursuits. Haha, <laughs> you can see it from my belly. The locals praise the reputations of Changshu, Jiangsai. I'm going to look for some famous dishes in Changshu. Today we're at a very famous restaurant in Changshu, famous for its steamed food. Let's go in and have a try. 
Ah, Mr. Gu. Ah, Ni Hao. I understand that you were very famous in Changshu for steamed food, and I'd like to have a look. Hey, welcome to Ah, thank you. Food is the chief necessity of the people. When enjoying the food, everything before your eyes brightens. Changshu Jiangsai is a vital part of Changshu food culture. Jiangsai, that features a fresh aroma and delicate taste, is favored by people at home and abroad. Jiangsai also embodies the quintessential philosophy of Jiangnan cuisine, the integration of heaven and human as well as natural. How is it cooked? Uh, I on the Ingredients of Dong Xiang Zhen Sai include shredded scallops, pigeon eggs, ham, fish maw, chicken breast, winter bamboo shoots, etc. After seasoning the ingredients and cooking them, put them in order into the bowl to form a circle. Pour broth in the bowl and steam the food for 30 minutes using moderate heat. They put the water in here because the steam and the water make a soup, and the soup is what brings out the flavor. There are no spices in any of this food. It's all through steaming and through uh, the soup that's in here. So let's try one of these. This is a little bitter. It's like a cooked egg. Mmm. As you can see, it's got some meat inside of it. And it's uh, almost like a dumpling. Hmm. Very tender, very delicious. Zheng Sai steamed food. At first, it was mainly popular among citizens. There were some special dishes only cooked during village banquets. There was a crowd of guests, but the time to cook was limited, so people came up with the idea of steaming food. Changsu is located by the river, so there are many freshwater foods. Steaming is the best way to preserve the original flavor and to promote the healthy and low-carbon lifestyle that modern people uphold. In Changsu, this is a city of delicacies, and one can enjoy specialities such as eight freshwater foods, eight earth foods, beggar's chicken, osmothus wine, crepe wontons, red glutinous rice, etc. Changsu specifically has relations, strong relations with Australia, Japan, France, and of course the United States. And like many cities in the world, and some in China, Changshu has a sister city in California called Whittier. And most of you would know Whittier, California. So again, the ties are getting stronger, and if you come here, you'll feel that. And I'm welcome for you to come. Riding a bike to search for delicious food, touring streets and lanes, smiling at everyone and saying hello to them is the way of sightseeing that I find quite pleasing. In my view, the lifestyle of this city is like riding a bike. It's neither hasty nor rushed, with the locals savoring and experiencing their lives. Uh, this river oh, yeah. is around the, the old uh, city. <laughs> but, oh, this is the old city. Hey, no. This is the old right. city. Hey, uh, and and this. The new. <laughs> this is oh, this is new. Sinda. Ah, ah. Let me tell you a small secret. I do appreciate the lifestyle of the Changshu people. A slow-paced life. What is a slow-paced life? In my view, a slow-paced life is embodied by the bridge and running water on Hedong Street, the peddling vendors on Nanmen Tangshang, the bathhouse conventions and Yu Chun Shir bathhouse, the copper coin hangings made by a granny in an old shop.
so we went riding around the city. Again, I went riding um, some of the modern parts of the city, some of the ancient parts of the city. Went along the Canal Street. Again, I said that there's many canals here in this area. So I went along one of the Canal Streets and that was very pretty. The people here are wonderful. The atmosphere is open. The streets are wide in most places. All the modern streets are very wide. It's really clean here. It's do you know what a Kwai Sung Hua is? Literally, fast life. Kwai Sung Hua is a happy life. My Chinese is not so good, but I have no problem with chatting in Changshu. Everyone is enthusiastic. Saying the word hello along with a big smile and my unique laughter, I can make friends with people from all genders and ages. Yeah, I'm just too big. I eat too much Chinese food. Yeah. Yes. Yes. David, that way. Nice to meet you. You too. Oh, nice to meet you. Your English is good. A little. Okay. People say all good things must come to an end. My time in Changshu is fleeting. I experienced a lot and had fun. Changshu is a beautiful city. As you can see, we're standing here on the ancient wall. Now, this is the city wall. It looks new because it's been rebuilt, but it's very ancient. In ancient times, it was a fortress. It actually housed a military group up here. And if, of course, if you wanted to try to get on the wall or go over the wall, you had to go through the military and you had to have a special pass to do that. Now, Changshu has two parts. There's an ancient part and a modern part. In today's China, everyone wants to modernize to the best of their ability because the people want to grow, they want to move forward, but they want to keep their history here in Changshu. So they're trying to preserve that very well. The new and the old are not necessarily contradictory. They more likely merge into each other. Nowadays, ancient Changshu in Jiangnan is developing with international concepts it is green, natural, healthy, eco-friendly, vivid, and energetic.